lift our hands and let's magnify the Lord again tonight, shall we? Praise God. I love you, Jesus. I praise you, Father. I bless you, Lord. I bless you, Lord. Hallelujah. Ah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Everybody say praise the Lord. Amen. I'm reading from the book of Esther, the fourth chapter. While you're turning, I want to say it's our privilege to be in section one. And it's our opportunity to preach the word of the Lord. I recognize and realize that there are far better preachers and ministers that could come and preach but I appreciate the opportunity to be here amen <clears throat> and uh, thankful for the blessings of the Lord amen and I have a feeling these next three nights the Lord's going to visit us in a very special way amen it's time to have revival amen I said it's time to have revival amen I want to preach about revival, preach about the work of God. Amen. I hope somehow the Holy Ghost will help us tonight. I do believe that there are people that have come that are in spiritual battle. And I believe the Lord wants to encourage you tonight. I believe he wants to strengthen you. And it's not time to give up. It's not time to quit. It's not time to turn around. It's not time to compromise. It's time to stand tall and let the world know that there's still a church. Amen. Amen, 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 amen. Book of Esther, the fourth chapter, <laughs> verse 13. Then Mordecai, I commanded to answer Esther, Think not with thyself, that thou shalt escape in the king's house more than all the Jews. For if thou altogether holdest thy peace at this time, I want you to notice what he said, if you hold your peace at this time, then shall their enlargement and deliverance arise to the Jews from another place. But thou and thy father's house shall be destroyed, and who knoweth whether thou art come to the kingdom for such a time as this. And Esther bade them return Mordecai this answer. Go gather together all the Jews that are present in Shushan. And fast ye for me, and neither eat nor drink three days, night or day. I also and my maidens will fast likewise. And so will I go in unto the king, which is not according to the law. And if I perish, I perish. That's quite a statement. We like to live. But she said, if I perish, I perish. But there's one thing I'm not going to do. I'm not going to shirk my responsibility. Amen. I want you to notice in verse number 14, if thou altogether holdest thy peace at this time, then shall their enlargement and deliverance arise to the Jews from another place, but thou and thy father's house shall be destroyed, and who knoweth whether thou art come to the kingdom for such a time as this. I want to preach tonight by the help of the Holy Ghost on this subject, who knoweth, who knoweth, amen. I feel the Holy Ghost here right now. Amen. You know, if we're not careful, we'll preach apostolic ministry, but not practice it. We'll talk about the Holy Ghost moving and taking over, but that's sometimes as far as we get. So I tell you what, let's do. Whenever God wants to take it over, let's just let him take it over. Whatever God wants us to do, whether it's to weep or to shout, let's just follow the Holy Ghost. Praise God. Anybody want to do that with me here tonight? 
Amen. Let's lift our hands and our voices one more time, shall we? Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. And everybody say praise the Lord. Amen. You may be seated. Praise God. The quicker you wake up and realize that there is an enemy that wants to destroy you, the better off you are. Amen. And an evangelist that preached for us a couple Sundays ago, and he preached about the lion, Satan as a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. He talked about the nature of a lion, how it preys and is a predator. And I will never forget some of the examples that he used. And I made up my mind again that I do not want to be destroyed by the enemy. Amen. I told him after church, I said, let me tell you one little thing about the enemy. He starts out as a little pet cub. But little pet cubs grow up to be big lions. Amen. And a lot of times the things that we uh, think are cute and fun when it comes to our adversary and sin, the problem is that a lot of those things grow up to have tremendous detriment to all of us. Amen. And so, again, as it has always been since the beginning of time, the adversary has tried his best, again, to stop the people of God. Amen. But I'm glad that Jesus said upon this rock, I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Amen. I know and you know the church is going to go on. The church is going to be victorious. The church is going to make it. I may not be a part of it, and you may not be a part of it, but the church is going to make it. It's going to go on until Jesus Christ raptures it off this terra firma. I want to be a part of that church. I want to be involved in that church. I want to be on the front line in the army of the living God. Amen. Amen. I'm not here to go into this entirety of the story. But you know as well as I, when Mordecai came to Esther and began to tell her of the plot that was happening and the dilemma that they were in, it's easy sometimes for us, after God has been so good to us, for us to forget, perhaps, where God brought us from. I think that's one of the biggest dilemmas that a lot of Pentecostal people find themselves in is they forget that they have not always been what they are now and they've not always had what they have now. Amen. I do not think it was by accident though that the Queen Vashti refused to come to the king. I do not think it was by accident that Esther was chosen out of all of the thousands of handmaidens that could have been picked. I believe that God in his divine sense and his seeing things understood before Esther ever come to the throne that there would be a plot to destroy the people of covenant. And so he moves and he positions. He brings those that were not and people of obscurity into positions and places that they, they may have thought it was by their own merit or by their own ability. But I'm telling you, it is by the goodness of God that any of us are where we're at right now. Amen. She may have thought it was her looks that got her there or her graces that got her there. But I want you to understand that God strategically placed Esther right where she needed to be for a special time and a special season when the enemy would come to destroy. God would have the right person at the right place doing the right thing. Oh, hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. Perhaps she's grown accustomed to the luxuries of the palace. 
because it's apparent at first that she does not want to accept this responsibility. Let their salvation arise from somewhere else. Tell Mordecai, I don't want to get involved. I could lose my life for what he's asking me to do. But the answer came back from Mordecai. He said, you just ask her this question. That if she thinks for one minute that she's a part of the king's house and she will be exempt from this destruction, you tell her she's badly wrong. She'll not only die, but her father's household is going to die. And I want you to ask her one question. Ask her, who knoweth whether thou hast been brought to the kingdom for such a time as this? Just ask her the question. Amen. The question is asked. And he told her, he said, don't you think for one minute that God will not raise up somebody else. And I want to tell all of us apostolics tonight, if we don't, somebody else will. God's going to have a church. God's going to have a revival church. God's going to have an apostolic church. God's going to have a glorious church. God's going to have a powerful church. And if we don't do the will of God, God will raise up somebody else to do the job for this end time. Yes, he will. Yes, he will. Amen. She sent the reply back. She said, you go back and tell Mordecai that I said that call them together for a fast. I'm going to do what he's asked me to do. You fast and will fast. And if I perish, I perish. But I'm going to do what God placed me to do. Woo. Amen. Mordecai, I ask her the question, who knoweth? Esther, tell us who knows. I have found out that there are usually three arenas that have to know. Two of them are very aware of it. I, I don't understand this and I can't tell you how it works. Brother Shoemaker, it's almost like when God picks somebody to do a job, automatically there are two elements that know. Heaven knows and hell knows. Stay with me a second. I said heaven knows and hell knows. The third party is the party involved. Sometimes they get the revelation and the comprehension and sometimes they don't. Sometimes they realize and recognize that I have been divinely picked by God for this hour. Amen. I think that something started going off in Esther's mind and she starts reflecting on it all. I'm not here by accident. I am not here by some freak something. I see the plan of God now. I see how God divinely called the shots to put me in this position. And so if heaven knows, then it stands to reason that God is going to help me to get the job done. And if I perish, I perish. I want you to understand tonight. Heaven is doing everything it can to get you to where you need to go. And hell is doing everything it can to stop you. But the one who determines the outcome is the individual involved. Hallelujah. Heaven understands it and hell understands it. But I am afraid that there are a lot of Pentecostal people that go through their entire existence thinking that all there is to living for God is just paying tithe and coming to church and rejoicing when the choir sings. They never wake up and understand. I'm not here by accident. I used to be a drug addict. I used to be an alcoholic. I used to be a whoremonger. But I remember the night sitting on a Pentecostal pew when the preacher began to preach. 
Vashti had rejected the call. But oh, I remember when the king pointed his scepter and I felt the grace of God and I felt the call of God. I knelt that night in prayer. Something happened. Something got a hold of me. Something changed my life. It was the Holy Ghost. Now you think with me just a moment. Out of all of the millions and billions of people on the face of the earth that he could have chose, that he could have picked, he found you. Who? It wasn't by accident. Out of all the people in this county, in this city, this state, nation, and world, out of all of the multitudes of people, it was that night that the Holy Ghost singled you out. You said it yourself. It was like the preacher had my number. It was like I was the only one in the building. It was like God was talking directly to me. I got news for you. He was. You see, he seen down the road. And he said, I got to have somebody to be at the right place at the right time. Most people are defeated spiritually because they never know. I will say it again. Most people are defeated because they never know. God's been good to me. He picked me. He chose me. Placed me in his palace. His blessings have been good. <laughs> you know what? There's more for me being here, though, than to enjoy the nice chariots and the royal clothes and the banquets. That's what we got to find out. I know a lot of people that live their whole life never understanding their purpose hang on now amen who knoweth it's like God picks it's like Herod it's like the enemy when God gets ready to birth something and God gets ready to do something I've seen young people in my church and I'm sure these pastors can say it, that that from the time they were that high you sensed the touch of God on their life and you, you knew there's something special about that young man or that young lady. But you watch them. You mark it down. You watch them. Some little flipper come through the church. Amen. She'll do everything she can to destroy that young man. She doesn't love him. I'll say it and go on record for saying it. I believe they're tools of the devil that are sent into the congregation to do nothing. But heaven said, I've chosen him, or I've chosen her. And hell said, uh-huh, and there's a divine appointment coming. And i got to do everything I can to stop it. That's why you need to wake up and say, hey, wait just a minute. I'm in this thing for more than a little glossolalia. I've got a divine purpose in my life. And I have got to do what God called me to do. And if I never get that understanding, then I just think some of the things that I go through are just, well, that's just life. And these kind of things happen. And, you know, I mean, this is just the way it goes. And, and if I make it, I make it. If I don't, I don't. And I can be inconsistent and up and down. And, and, you know, I mean, what difference does it make? I, I keep bouncing back and all that stuff. I'm going to tell you what's going to happen. Uh, let, me, let me tell you this. The closer you get to where God wants you to be, and what God wants you to be, the more pressure you start feeling. You mark it down. You let the church start praying and seeking God, fasting and committing to God. 
you let intercessory prayer break out around the altar. You let some of the old prayer warriors start growing in the Holy Ghost. You just mark it down. I'm going to preach about it one night. Amen. You just mark it down. Hell's fixing to break loose all through the church. Because hell says we know what they're supposed to do. And we've got to do everything we can to get them from doing it. But wait just a minute. I understand right now. Paul said his grace is sufficient. I can do it through him. I can make it through him. I've got to be there. I've got to be standing in that strategic place at the right time. Amen. You determine the outcome. You know, let me talk to you about a second. Most people that I know in Pentecost struggle with a feeling of insignificance. I've said this before, and maybe it didn't help anybody, but it sure helped me. We are bound by unbelief. Strong unbelief. But you know what? Last year, I told church in San Jose this weekend, last year I seen the dead raised. I seen blinded eyes open and deaf ears unstopped. Amen. I seen people bound by alcohol and drugs delivered. I've seen one revival at home, several month revival, seen over 200 people receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost. There ain't no doubt in my mind about the power of God. I believe in the power of God. We all believe in the power of God. Everybody here tonight would say, if I said, do you believe that God can heal? About everybody in the building would start waving their hands and I know God can heal. I believe God can heal. You believe God can raise from the dead? And there'd probably be someone to start testifying about services that they were in. I was in Colorado Springs last year, servicing Brother Tommy Johnson's daughter, a mildly retarded daughter, was over on the front second pew there. And while the preacher read his text, she just fell over. And a couple of nurses come working with her. And they told Brother Johnson, said, she's, she's gone. She's dead. Somebody went and run and called the paramedics. And, and they were trying to get her to respond. And the nurses kept saying, Brother, she makes she, or Brother Johnson, she's gone. And uh, the church was praying. And I'm, I mean, they was praying in the Holy Ghost. And about 15 seconds before the paramedics walked in, God decided it would be a good time to raise that little darling from the dead. She set up off of that pew, and when she did, well, you know what happened in the church service. And just about the time all oh, heaven broke loose, the paramedics come walking in. They took her on to the emergency room, and, and they examined her. The doctor come out and said, Reverend, your daughter, the body tells the tale that she was dead. Let me tell you what else happened. Not only did God raise her from the dead, but a few days after that happened, they got to noticing that her mind was a whole lot better. And so they took her back to the psychiatrist and stuff, and they went to running some tests. And they come back and said, we don't understand it. Her mind is increasing. I seen her just a few days ago come by and shook my hand and said, Praise the Lord, Brother Morgan. How are you doing? Brother Johnson said, Things that's been suppressed in her memory, she's recalling now. I know my God can do it. To him, there's nothing to it. He can do it. He can do it. He can do it. So it's not that we have unbelief in the power of God. But our unbelief is in this. He can't do it through me. <laughs> you mean, you mean to tell me the whole nation rests? Their salvation rests on me? That's right, Esther. You mean... I'm here for more than just to please the king. That's right, Esther. You mean their salvation is determined on what I do? That's right, Esther. Has it ever dawned on you? Well, you know, we believe, and we got our heroes of Pentecost. 
Well, God can do it through them, and God can use this one, and God can use that one. And this one can have revival, and that one can have revival because they got their act together, and they've got it all together, you know, and they, 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 they just do it right. And, and I, oh, yeah, I believe that they could do it, and I believe they could have it. But what about you? What's, what's, what's the purpose of God for you being here? Oh, it's getting tighter now. Amen. You know, we got past the choir singing a while ago, and that's about as far as some Pentecostals can get. And I'm not knocking the choir. I pay a lot of money to have good music at home. But all some Pentecostals know is a little bebop and a little high emotion. And after that wears off, they're, they're just as lost as a goose in a hailstorm. That's lost. Amen. You don't have the foggiest idea what's going on. I got news for you. God gave you the Holy Ghost to do more than be bop on Sunday night. If I read my Bible correct. He said, these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name, in my name, in my name, in my name. I'm going to give you the power to get the job done. I'm here to help you to get the job done. Why can't we wake up and realize this isn't just for select few celebrities. This is for whosoever will. Somebody's got to get a hold of it. You want to turn this section upside down? I'll tell you what you do. You wake up and say, I know. I know. Heaven knows and hell knows. But it just dawned on me. I've been putting the kingdom for such a time as this. Now watch it. Watch this. Watch this now. Throw your curveball. Here he comes. Here he comes. Where? Watch him now. Watch him. He walks by. He walks by the tax collecting table and says, "Put up your record books. Come on." He walks by some old smelly fishing boats. He says, "Put your nets up, Peter, James, and John." Come on, follow me. I'll make you fishers of men. He walks by unpeculiar people. I mean, people that you would have just walked on by and said, uh-uh. But he hand-picked them. I mean, he didn't take any chance. He himself, the master, called them. Come on, boys. Come on and follow me. <laughs> Stay with me here a second. Now, I'm going to show you something. Doesn't it stand to reason just as much time as he took in picking those to start it? Don't you think he took the same time to pick those to end it? <laughs> Some of you missed it. Some of you missed it right there. Well, if I could just be like the Apostle Peter. If I could just be like the Apostle Paul. If I could be just like James or John. I'm going to tell you something. He handpicked those men to burrow this thing and to bring it into being. Because he said you can get the job done because you're not going to trust in your own self. And just as he handpicked them, honey, I got news for you. You're not here by accident. You're not here by chance. He chose you. You gotta get the understanding. Hey, I've been picked by God to wrap this thing up. I can do it through Him. I can get the job done. I know I can. I know I can. I can do it. Hey. Honey, it's the end time. This thing is wrapping up. You have been chosen for the kingdom for this hour and for this time. Let me tell you something. 
I, this, I wasn't, I wasn't going to use this illustration, but when I sat up here tonight, it come to me. Paul had specific instructions. There's a man who understood his purpose. It was Paul. He knew. He specifically said it. He said, I'm the gent I'm the apostle to the Gentiles. I understand what God has called me to do. He knew it. God also told him that he'd go to Rome. And he would preach in Rome. He climbs aboard a ship. Storm breaks loose. Now I know nobody in the buildings ever had a storm. Now let me tell you what's going to happen. If you all of a sudden get the direction you're seeking for. And you find the will of God. Get ready. On your way, hell is going to bring a storm. And so what do you do? Somebody give me a, a boat to get out of here on. I'm diving overboard. I'll just go back to where I come from. You know what? If God told you he was going to preach at Rome, it don't matter what's going on. You're going to Rome. That's right. So you know what he did? What we probably all should learn to do. He had a good prayer meeting. He didn't call the pastor and freak out on him. I'm going down, pastor. I can't take it. I need to spend about two hours of your time to tell you about it. I am not the counselor. All I'm going to tell you is let's pray about it. So, but you know, I found out a lot of people would rather let you do their praying for them. So, he was having a prayer meeting. The Bible says an angel comes and stood by him. I don't want to get too far into that. I never thought I'd see the day of Pentecost. If you said angel, everybody go. Uh oh. <laughs> Sound like the Church of Christ to me. <laughs> and the uh, angel come by and stood next to him and said, It's all right, Paul. What did God tell you? What did God tell you? You're going to Rome. This is the will of God. This is what you were called for. You're going to Rome. Now watch what happened. Ship destroyed. All of them were saved. They end up on an island. Paul's trying to warm himself. And what the storm couldn't do, the serpent tried. It latches on his hand. And when he pulls it up, the barbarians say, This man is a murderer. He was. He was. He was. And here's his past coming up. Trying to stop him from his future. And there he stands with the snake hanging on him. And they said, he's a murderer. And I can see the flashback. He's standing looking at Stephen. He's consenting to his death. And he said, I was a murderer. Apparently this is the judgment of God. Now Paul, Paul. Don't you think God knew what your past was when he chose you? Don't you think he knew what you were when he knocked you down by a blinding light and said, Saul, why persecutest thou me? Don't you think he knew what your record was when he reached down in the gutter and found you? Don't you think he knows what you were? Yes, he did. I said, yes, he did. But I'm going to tell you what some of you need to do. You need to do just like the Apostle Paul. You need to build your, get a hold of your side, shake your past off in it, and say, devil, you're a liar. I'm going to 
going to Rome. I got a job to do. I know I've been called to preach the gospel to the church of Rome. Woo! I, I, preacher, you don't understand. I can't do it if you only knew my past. Preacher, I, I'm afraid I can't be like that. If you only knew what was behind me. I'm not just talking to saints, I'm talking to preachers. I'm talking to all of us tonight. That's the biggest trick the enemy can play. Is you'll come through the storm, you'll face the liar. But honey, that old serpent of the past will latch a hold of you so I'm not good enough to do the will of God. I don't have enough grace to do it. I'm not perfect enough to do it. Wait a minute! God said you're going to Rome! I gotta get on down the road. I got a job to do. Somebody needs to shake it in the fire right now. That devil's been lying to you long enough. That past has been hanging on to you long enough. You've been stopped in your track by your past, shaking the fire, and say, I can do all things through Christ, which strengthens me. Somebody's fixing to break loose. Somebody's fixing to break free. Somebody fixing to, hey, God put me here. It doesn't matter what's back here. It matters what's here and forward. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I can do it. I can do it. I can do it. I can do it. Come on, shake him in the fire. Shake him in the fire. Come on, I'm through preaching. You need to do what the Holy Ghost says right now. Some of you have been bound by your past. You need to break the chains off of you right now. You need to make up your mind. God, you didn't pick me to die here. You didn't pick me to succumb to this. I'm going on. I'm going on. I'm going on. I'm going on and build that church. I'm going to go on and preach the gospel. I'm going to go on and have victory. I'm not going to die on this God-forsaken island. Tell you what I feel in the Holy Ghost. There's some of you come to this 
sectional conference. And you said, dear God, just trying to do the will of God. And it seems like the closer I get to victory and the closer I get to revival, the harder it gets. Yeah. Yeah. Let's try this one off for size. The more I press toward evangelization of the world and spreading the gospel, the more my church is attacked and our finances are attacked. Huh? Pastor starts preaching revival and every man in the building's under attack. People start losing their jobs. Crazy stuff starts happening. And you say, my God, what in the world am I doing wrong? Nothing. Not one thing. Not one thing. Matter of fact, you're doing everything right. It's just hell said I gotta stop you. But I got a message for you tonight, hell. You can't stop us if we'll just keep pressing on. It's gonna break. It's gonna happen. It's gonna come through. You can't stop it, devil. It's the end time. It's time for revival. It's time for a Holy Ghost breakthrough. You can't stop it. It's the will of God. If God can just find somebody that says, I know. Can anybody relate to what I'm talking about right now? I got, I, got, I, got, I got to tell somebody something. Moses is trying to do the will of God. Yeah. And he said he heard from God. I mean, after all, he's got a burning bush talking to him. Of course, if that was in modern Pentecost, they'd look at you and say, better be careful now. <laughs> better leave that alone. And uh, he's got the people of God, <laughs> he thought, headed toward the promised land. And all of a sudden, he's got wilderness on both sides and a Red Sea in front of him and Pharaoh right behind him. And you know what Moses says? Stand still and see the salvation of your God. Oh, 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 oh. That ain't nothing to shout about. We've been shouting about that. That ain't nothing to shout about. God didn't tell him to stand still. Man, we've, we've shouted about that for years. Read the next verse. The Bible says, The Lord saith unto Moses, Why for criest thou unto me? You said it, I didn't. Tell the people to go forward. Uh, wait a minute, God. We got a little problem here. We got some water in front of us. And uh, not everybody knows how to swim. What do you got in your hand, Moses? Well, uh, this old rod. <laughs> Moses, stretch it toward the Red Sea. Here's what we do. We're hot in pursuit of doing the will of God. And the next thing you know, you get boxed in. Wilderness on both sides, 
Red Sea in front of you. An old slew foot behind you. And it's all of us. It's our reaction to stop. Well, let's see what God will do now. Let's just wait. And so we stop and we die. Hmm. We get in a building program, and the enemy's hot on our trail. Hmm. It's time to go forward. Listen to me, listen to me, listen to me. I always like to be right in a revival and run smack dab out of money. Believe it or not, in Oklahoma, all that oil we got around there, we run out of money. Dear God, what are we going to do? Right in the middle of all that, the IRS decides to hit us. Hmm. And I mean, I was like, some of the good people at church say, you know, Brother Morgan, maybe we ought to close. Well, you know what? That sounds pretty good. But then when I want to talk... Here it is. Because what you will go forward into is what I will use to destroy what's behind you. That's why the enemy doesn't want us having revival. That's why every time as a movement or a church or a district, we start toward apostolic revival and things start getting heated up. Get ready. Get ready. You know what? If we stop, we die. So I'll tell you what we need. We just need some stuff. Well, ain't got nothing to lose. Come on, what do you got to lose? I'll, I know we're in section one, but I feel it on me again tonight. I'm telling you, there's six weeks of financial miracles happen just simply because of what you said last night, what you determined to do. It, you don't, you, well, you do. It just like get open. Red Sea open. Hallelujah. Red Sea open. Hallelujah. Red Sea open. God called me to get them to the promised land. And I don't care if there's a Red Sea in front of me right now or not. Wow. We're going to cross. We're going to do something a little crazy tonight. Or if we do something kind of crazy, can we do something a little unorthodox right here? Y'all ready? I'm not going to do nothing wild. Just a step of faith. What how many people's here tonight? You say, you know what? I got a red seat in front of me. And I'm, I've been fighting some stuff. But you know what? I want to go on and do the will of God. Can I see your hand? You, 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 really, you really serious about this? Okay. I'm 
got tied over here. <laughs> start to do something, start to build. You need to build. You need to build. Start to do something. I'm getting on my message tomorrow night. I'm getting on my message tomorrow night. Oh boy. Here it goes. Do what you do, all right? Some more of these other people are going to follow you here in a second. I want you to look at your Red Sea. I want you to take three steps forward. Go the third step. It's going to break. It's break. When you're ready. Any other pastors got a Red Sea in front of you? We're going to start here. Any other? Come on now. Step on down. Hold it just a second. Come back up. Come back up there. Got any saints from these churches here? Got anybody from Brother Buxton's church here? Three steps forward into your Red Sea. Holy Ghost is going to give victory. Brother Loney, anybody from his church here? Come on. I should, they're coming. Take about three steps forward. Start praising God for the parting of the Red Sea. God told me I was going to the promised land. Now, some of you out there, if you've got a Red Sea in front of you, step out in the aisle, take about three steps, and begin to praise God for the parting of the Red Seas. 